Hello, I'm former Congressman Joe Diaguardi. I've dealt with numbers all my life. In my father's grocery store in the South Bronx, as a partner in a major accounting firm for 22 years, as a congressman in Washington, and now as a public advocate for fiscal responsibility. Two, one. Hello, I'm former Congressman Joe Diaguardi. I've dealt with numbers all my life. As a young boy growing up in the South Bronx behind the cash register in my father's grocery store, then as a staff accountant and partner in a big eight accounting firm for 22 years, and then as a congressman serving on the government operations and banking committees, and now as a citizen advocate for fiscal responsibility. Hello, I'm former Congressman Joe Diaguardi. I dealt with numbers all of my life, first as a young boy growing up in the South Bronx behind the cash register in my father's grocery store, then later as a staff accountant and partner in one of the world's largest accounting firms, Big 8 Firm, for 22 years, and more recently as a uh, congressman serving on the Banking Committee and the Government Operations Committee, and now as a citizen advocate for public... One... You know, there's a lot of talk these days about accountability. In fact, we recently witnessed the passage of the Congressional Accountability Act. And what basically that said is that the public is fed up with the double standards. And we've told our elected officials, especially with the last election in 1994, that if you're going to impose something on us, the taxpayer, make sure that you impose it on yourself. Unfortunately, they left a big hole. When they passed the Congressional Accountability Act, they didn't take care of the bookkeeping system. Now, I hate to sound like an accountant, but do you really know what your family's share is of the cost of government? Do you really know what your share is of the national debt? Do you think that you paid the cost of government, at least your share of it, when you filed your recent tax return on April 15th. It may shock you, but I'm here to tell you that you didn't. And what you didn't pay, someone has to pay. And that someone is probably going to be your children uh, and grandchildren. I don't think this is the legacy that we want to leave here in America. What can we do about it? Well, let me sound like an accountant. You can't have accountability until you have a good set of books. Every businessman knows that, because if a tax return is filed without a good set of books, you could have indictments for tax evasion. Every corporate official of a publicly traded corporation knows that, because if they don't have a good set of books, independently audited, and a clear reporting, full disclosure it's called, in the accounting world, uh, they could be subject to indictments for securities fraud. But when it comes to the United States of America, Believe it or not, the world's largest issuer of securities. I'm told that we issue something like $30 billion of treasury bills, treasury bonds, every month. You don't get one piece of paper, and the federal government is still using what I've called the most Mickey Mouse accounting system in the world. It's called the cash basis of accounting. You use it in balancing your checkbook at home, New York City used it, that's at least until 1975, when they got into trouble and they needed a bailout. We still use that system. Who's going to bail us out? Who is the Moody's and Standard & Poor's for the United States government that we saw entering so effectively the argument that led to the bailout back in 1975? These are questions that must be answered. Uh, later on in the show, we're going to be talking to uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich, I worked with him. In fact, we wrote a book together back in 1987 on the issues that affected Congress at that time. Uh, and more recently, uh, Newt Gingrich has been the architect of the first uh, of the contract with America, where we've seen some of these issues addressed. We're going to hear from the speaker to see what his ideas are in straightening out the books of the United States of America. Let's talk about the uh, concept of accountability. 
There's been a lot of talk about that in the media these days, as there should be, because I think it's important that you, as a taxpayer and citizen, get the feeling that you're getting a dollar's worth of goods and services from the federal government for a dollar's worth of, uh, no, let's go back. One. Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about accountability in Washington these days, and around America, for that matter. In fact, this year, this year we witnessed the passage of the Congressional Accountability Act, something that was long in coming. But there's a big hole in that act, because while they try to address some of the double standards that exist, they didn't address the issue of the two sets of books that we seem to be keeping in government today. What do I mean by that? Well, let's begin with some questions. Do you really know what your share and your family's share is of the cost of the federal government today? Do you really know what your share is of the national debt? Many of us uh, think that when we filed our tax return on April 15th, we paid for our family's share of the federal cost of, of the cost of the federal government. Basically, we didn't. There's a lot that's being done in America, off the books, so to speak, being passed on to the next generation. I hate to sound like an accountant, but you can't talk about accountability without talking about a good set of books. In government today, we have a shabby set of books. In fact, the federal government still uses the same Mickey Mouse cash basis of accounting that we took New York City off of in 1975 as a price for the bailout. Using that kind of a system enables our elected officials, wittingly or unwittingly, to disguise the real cost of government. And that's not good for you, and it's certainly not good for the next generation. The bottom line to me for accountability is giving the taxpayers a dollar's worth of goods and services for a dollar's worth of taxes. You can't tell whether you're getting that unless you have an accounting system that gives you the real economic facts, the real numbers. And more than that, you need independent audits. And more than that, you need clear reporting to the real shareholders of government, the taxpayers. You know, government imposes on us truth in advertising, truth in lending. Isn't it about time that we imposed on government truth in government spending? I call it basically truth in government. Well, we're going to hear from uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich, a good friend. I served four years with him in the House of Representatives. Newt and I were activists trying to bring accountability to government. Recently, he even imposed independent audits. This is historic on the House of Representatives. Uh, let's hope that... Uh, we can hear from the speaker directly about how we might do that with all of government. Enough for now. Let's turn to the next segment. Three, two, one. You know, there's a lot of talk today about accountability. Basically, the double standards that exist today between what government does and what you're forced to do. The bottom line to accountability for me is the question, are you getting a dollar's worth of goods and services from the federal government for a dollar's worth of taxes? That question really can't be asked unless we look at the accounting systems that our government is using today. We have today a double set of books. There is much that is going on in America that is not being recorded on the books of the United States of America. Do you think that when you filed your tax return on April 15th that you paid your family's full share of the cost of running the United States of America? You probably think you did, but you didn't. There is a lot that has to be paid and will be paid. It's called our national debt. That's what's on the books. You can't believe the unrecorded liabilities that have not been bonded, that are off the books. But someone has to pay for these, 
and it's likely to be your children and your grandchildren. We had a positive development this year with the passage of the Congressional Accountability Act, but they left a big hole. They didn't impose on government the same kinds of Securities and Exchange Commission rules that are imposed on publicly traded corporations today. Now, why is that important? Well, when a businessman and when you as an individual file your tax return, you basically have to keep a pretty good set of books or records. If you don't, the government can come back to you and indict you for tax evasion. The offices of a publicly traded corporation have a similar problem. If they don't keep their books on what is called generally accepted accounting principles and have an independent audit and report back to you with what accountants call full disclosure, they can be indicted for securities fraud. And yet the United States government, the world's largest issuer of securities, over $30 billion of treasury bills, treasury bonds each month, doesn't give you one piece of paper and uses, in fact, a very shabby accounting system called the cash basis. It's the system that got New York City into trouble in 1975, requiring us to bail it out. Well, we're going to hear from Speaker Newt Gingrich on some of these concepts a little later on in the show. I just wanted to whet your appetite. One. Earlier in the program, we talked about that day of infamy, April 15th. And many of you thought that you paid the full share of your cost to the federal government. You really only paid the current balance. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a lot that we do in government that is being passed on the next generation. The government doesn't bill you for your share of the annual deficit or your share of the national debt, which is the accumulation of the annual deficits. Before I alluded to clear reporting, you need a good set of books, you need independent objective auditors, but then for any of this to make sense to you as a taxpayer and citizen, you need to get it in a form that you can understand. Well, as someone who's practiced in accounting all my life, I thought about this challenge, and I said, you know, many of us don't even own shares of stock in publicly traded corporations, at least not directly. We might own them indirectly through pension funds. But all of us have credit cards, and all of us get credit card statements. So most of us would be able to understand a credit card statement, but some of us may not be able to understand a profit and loss statement, a balance sheet, certainly not one as complex as the United States of America. So let me show you what I've done here. I've used my imagination as an accountant and as a congressman, and I've put the annual budget of the United States of America, and by the way, this is using the numbers that are on the books. It gets worse than this, but let's start with this. I've used the, I've taken the annual budget, and I've put it in the form of a credit card statement. Look at the beginning balance. That's your share of the national debt of the United States of America at the beginning of this fiscal year on October the 1st. Look at the first column, purchases. You see it on your credit card statement. Well, the government does purchase things on your behalf. In Congress, we called it appropriations. We used that plastic credit card that I showed you before, actually a plastic voting card, the most expensive credit card in the world, to appropriate to purchase. And there we go. Your share of Social Security, your share of national defense, your share of everything the government does on your behalf. Look at the second column, payments. Well, 
Take a look at the income taxes that you pay. That's the average paid by each American filing a Form 1040. Look at the number just below it, Social Security taxes. Numbers at these, this level start to speak to you and look at the comparison between income taxes and Social Security taxes and you'll see that we're funding the cost of government because those Social Security taxes are not going in to the Social Security Trust Fund. We're funding the cost of government on the most regressive tax that we've ever created because with the Social Security tax, there are no deductions, no exemptions, uh, no credits, no exclusions. Finally, look at the finance charge. That's your share of the interest on the national debt, $1,734 last year. Bringing the new balance due to $40,126 for taxpayer. Now that's the national debt brought down to your level. That's what your family share is of the cost of government that you didn't pay on this April 15th or any other April 15th that will be paid for by the next generation. Two, one. We talked uh, earlier in the show about uh, accountability, and we talked about the elements of accountability. A good set of books, independent auditors, and clear reporting. Certainly clear reporting to you for your tax dollars uh, so that we know what government is doing with your money. Now, it's easy for us to get lost in the trillions and the billions, and it's difficult for many of us to understand a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement, because many of us don't own securities, at least directly. So I thought about being creative on this concept, and I said, you know, everybody has a credit card. And since we've talked about the most expensive credit card in the world, a congressman's voting card, shouldn't there be a U.S. taxpayer credit card statement? So what I've done here is I've put the budget of the United States of America in the form of a credit card statement like you would receive from Visa, Master Charge, Diners, whatever, so that you can understand what your share of the cost of the federal government is and what your share is of the national debt of the United States of America. Here we are. Look at the first line. The previous balance due, 37188 That was your share of the national debt, the accumulated deficits, as of October 1, 1993, the beginning of the last fiscal year. Look at the next column, purchases during the year, your share. Now, I could have come up with 150 different lines, but I chose what I thought were the key ones. Certainly Social Security, National Defense. Look at your shares of these. For instance, National Defense cost you, as a taxpayer, $2,405.56. Now, I think it begins to mean something to you, because literally, that's what you had to pay last year on average from your hard-earned money. Let's go down to the next column, next heading. Payments received during the year. Well, like any other credit card statement, if you don't pay, uh, you'll soon lose your ability to buy. And with the United States government as a taxpayer, uh, you need to pay your share of taxes. And you just did on April 15th. And as I say, thank you for your prompt payment. But look at the column or the line just below income taxes, Social Security taxes, 3944 Isn't it incredible that that is almost as much as income taxes? And since we don't put that money in the Social Security Trust Fund, as we've seen, that means we're funding the costs of government on what most people call the most regressive tax in the world because it has no deductions, no exemptions, no exclusions. Look at finance charge. That's your share of the interest on the national debt, $1,734.68 per taxpayer. We paid $212 billion, that's what it would be, in interest last year from our budget. 
And none of that went for social welfare, roads, or anything that would benefit us. And finally, the bottom line, the new balance due. When you start with the national debt at the beginning of the year, add what we bought for you, subtract what you gave us in taxes, add the interest on the national debt, we have a new balance per taxpayer of 40126 That was an increase of almost $3,000 over the year before. There it is. You didn't pay all your taxes on April the 15th. Our children and grandchildren, certainly the next generation, is going to have to make up for this difference. Three, two, one. Eight. Earlier in the program, we talked about the elements of accountability. And I hate to sound like an accountant again, but we did say we needed a good set of books. We needed an independent auditing of those books. And we needed clear reporting, certainly clear reporting to you as a shareholder in America. And that's what taxpayers really are. You do fund the cost of government, and you're extremely important to keep things rolling in Washington. So you should be told exactly what is going on. And you're not getting that message because you're not being given the message in a way that you can understand it. Now, I could bury you in numbers just the way Washington does. I could tell you that uh, the national debt is approaching $5 trillion. We, we're just passing the debt ceiling of $4.9 trillion. I could tell you that the budget this year is just in excess of $1 trillion, $500 billion. I could tell you that the interest that we paid last year is $212 billion with a B. I can make you feel even worse by telling you that's the good news. When you put on the books all the unrecorded liabilities, like almost $6 trillion for Social Security, a trillion dollars for civil service pensions, a trillion dollars for military pensions, and Lord knows how many trillions of dollars for government guarantees, like with the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation and others, I would probably lose you. In fact, I may have lost you already. So let's now bring it to the form that you can understand. Many of you don't have shares of stock in publicly traded corporations, so you're not familiar reading balance sheets and profit and loss statements, but you probably have a credit card. And since I refer to the most expensive credit card in the world, a congressman's plastic voting card, I thought I would show you a U.S. taxpayer credit card statement and your share of the numbers that we just referred to. And here it is. Here is the budget of the United States of America in the form of a credit card statement. Look at the beginning line, the previous balance due. Those are the accumulated deficits that you didn't pay on any April 15th. That is the beginning balance as of the beginning of the fiscal year, October 1, 1993, last fiscal year. $37,000. $188.03 for each taxpayer. Look at the purchases section, just like your credit card statement. Here's what government spent on your behalf. Social Security, $3,916.48. National Defense, $2,405.56, and on and on and on. I could have gone through 150 categories. I picked 10 or 12 because I wanted you to get the feel. This is your share of what the government has spent on these issues. Look at the next section, payments. Well, you can't be in business too long, and the government couldn't be in business if you didn't pay something. And you can see where the government's getting money. It's from income taxes, Social Security taxes, and other taxes, like excise taxes, estate taxes. Individual income taxes, your share on average, 4638 Look at Social Security taxes, 3944 Now. Social Security taxes, as we've seen, are not going into the Social Security Trust Fund, so they're being used to fund the rest of government. It's not right because it is a regressive way to collect taxes with no deductions, exemptions, and whatnot. Look at the finance charge, your share of the interest on the national debt. Would you believe that on average each taxpayer spent $1,734.68? That is the 
$112 billion that I referred to before by taxpayer. And finally, the final balance, the bottom line, when you add up all of this economic activity, which is on the books, you can't believe what's off the books, your share of the national debt has risen almost $3,000 to $40,000. $126.07. That's a big burden to be putting on the next generation.